Hey, it's Mike Caruso, publisher of The Fisherman Magazine, and welcome to The Fisherman TV. This is our third episode, and today we have something for everyone. We'll start out in Niantic, Connecticut, striped bass fishing. Then, off the south shore of Long Island, we're shark fishing. Lastly, really great segment with kids blow fishing in the Barnicut Bay. So sit back and enjoy. This is The Fisherman TV. I'm Dale Nicholson, Advertising Sales Manager for The Fisherman Magazine here in New England. Today we're going to show you wireline trolling techniques with Captains Carey and Kyle Doughton. They are the owners of the charter boats, the J&B and the Dottie D. They are also the owners of J&B Tackle here in Niana, Connecticut. I've known the Doughton family for over 25 years, going back to when Jack Doughton was the captain of the Dottie D. Jack has since retired and has left the running of the business in the capable hands of his son and grandsons. Today we will be trolling on the reefs of Connecticut and New York with large wooden plugs and Tony Maja spoons for striped bass. We will also show you some techniques for drifting bucktails with pork rinds. Hop aboard and let's have some fun. Well we're in Niantic and it's uh, the Niantic River. It's very well sheltered so we love to keep the boats here. Um, but it also gives us access to two to three local reefs which we can hit on the way in or the way out. But most of our days we find ourselves in the race where the waters from offshore meet the sound waters against some really rugged bottom structure and you've got plenty of different spots to fish along that whole area. When we first left the dock we knew that we needed that darkness to try to target those bigger fish on the plugs. Uh, got out there early and we had a few shots at them. Rod dip low. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Drag is very good. What we wanted. Come in now a little bit. Took a little while after his initial run. Nice job, Dale. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Just, Not really. A little bit. As soon as he pulls it out, it's gonna help, so just stay with it, okay? No, no. just pull it right out of gear for a second, Dad, while I'm getting on it. Yeah. Where the hell is this thing? Right here. Yeah, you can do it. It's still very weird. Pull it. Maybe it's follow-up. It might be follow-up. Gibbs Trolling Swimmer, as well as a Gibbs Google Eye. Those are the two most popular plugs that we use. One of the reasons we've chosen wire to fish is it presents the lure so well. It's all about presentation. And there's a lot of factors that come into that. The wire really works well at a lot of the stages of the tide in a lot of the local places that we fish. Bye.
you're fishing wireline with, uh, with spoons, with plugs, anything that has a swimming action to it, you can usually tell whether it's loaded up with weed, whether it's swimming properly. Each lure has a little different swimming action, and the more you feel the line, you get a sense of that. If you're actually fishing the rod, you can usually feel it through the rod. Each method we have has a time through the day, tide-wise, so we changed over to the third method, which is a drift fishing, which works out really well because you are holding the rod versus the boat catching the fish. Um, but it's got a, a lot more to do with the angler. They actually have to feel the bite, set the hook. There we go. This one's a decent fish. Yeah, it's got some head shake to it. Might be a big blue, but. How's it feel, Kyle? What was saying about that corner of the boat? That corner of the boat sucks. I'm under. Go ahead, go under. Good job, job. Oh, this is a decent track. bottom you're gonna be swinging the rod up and then taking two to three turns down depending on how fast your reel retrieve is and that way you're working the lure up the bank a lot of guys that have been doing it years to say that they can tell the difference between bottom and a, and a fish as long as I've been doing it I find it very difficult to and I always feel like if I decide to, if I try to make that decision I'm gonna miss that good bite so basically you swing at every tap and then you take your turns and one of those will be the fish as you're coming up the bank because that's where the fish are sitting um, and then you reel down on them. If you're fishing with like a jig or something like that where it's a fairly small profile lure and you're good. fishing with wire line, you can pump the rod. You don't want to pump it like you would necessarily normally bottom fishing or something. It's much more of a slow pump, reel down to gain the line. But when it comes to these specialty lures that are real large, uh, the spoons that we fished, these were some average size spoons. There are some larger ones on the market. And then the plugs, which is three treble hooks, and you never know how you have the fish hooked. If you start pumping on that, fit, the bass have very soft mouths. So if you start ripping their, their lips, then it creates a hole. And as soon as you have a little slack in the line, anybody, any margin of error there, you're going to lose that fish because that hook's going to drop right out. We went out with Dale today, and uh, he's been a longtime customer of the charter boat. He, uh, he used to go years ago with my grandfather. This is the first time I've actually had the opportunity to fish with him. Um, and then through his relationship with the magazine, uh, I see him a lot in the shop, and we do a lot of you know, different promotional things that way. Well, I hope you all had fun today aboard the JB Charter Boat. Thanks to an old friend of mine and a longtime fisherman subscriber, John Andrews, for jumping on the boat and helping us with the shoot. Special thanks to the Dalton family for getting us out there and showing us their expertise on the different techniques of catching trophy striped bass. I hope you enjoyed episode three of the Fisherman TV, and thanks for following us on Fisherman.com. This is Dale Nicholson from the Fisherman Magazine saying, Fish on! Since 1959, Boats Incorporated has been one of New England's premier dealerships. Their full-service marina has over 180 slips and only minutes from great fishing. Boats Incorporated is open every day or visit them on the web at BoatsInc.com. Here's a dish that can be prepared in just minutes. Learn how to cook striped bass to perfection with Nader, the fisherman's own celebrity chef. Today we're going to make striped bass. We're going to go a little creative today. We're going to make it over angel hair pasta with some broccoli, mushroom, sandra tomato, olive oil, and garlic. First of all, we're going to cut them a little bit scallops. All right, like this, like this, 
from here. We're gonna shave some of the bloodline, which is give it that little bit fishy flavor. You wanna treat them like nice scallops. All right, we have to make this fish crispy. So we're just gonna pan sear it, a little bit oil. Okay, we're gonna put a little bit kosher salt, the black pepper, and we're just gonna mix them up. All right. Now the oil is hot, is ready. Here, we're gonna put them, let's see. see. Let them sear for at least two minutes. Very, very high flame. Nice and brown, just turn them over them. All right, now you put them on the side. You don't have to uh, crisp both sides, only one side. Oil, some thin sliced garlic. You want the garlic to brown completely. All right, we're gonna put everything in the same time in the water. Angel hair pasta goes right here and the broccoli stems goes right here. And a little bit mushrooms and a little bit sun-dried tomato that's thin sliced right here, okay? By the time the angel hair pasta will be cooked, everything else will be cooked. You'll be amazed how the dish is gonna come together. Cooks very fast, take the water with the pasta and dump everything here. All right, just mix it. Now we take the stripes here, we put them in the oven for about two minutes. All right. Now we're gonna put all what we cooked here. Look how nice, colorful, pretty. And let's see how this dish is gonna come together, look. All right. Take that fish, pull right on the top here, like a maestro, uh, perfection. Maybe a small piece of fish together, you just want to eat two in one. Mm -mm -mm. Incredible, does not even taste like fish, it's unbelievable. Make it home, you will thank me, thank you. Well, it's mid-season, we're in the middle of the summer, and just about every species that you can think of in this region is available. One of the great things about midsummer is that some of the largest species, the offshore species, actually come pretty close to shore. Here's two veteran shark fishermen, John Raguso and Al Lorenzetti, just off the south shore of Long Island, having a great day with mako and thresher shark. Hi, I'm Captain John Raguso, the boating and marine products editor of the Fisherman Magazine. Today, we're fishing out of Babylon, New York, and we're going to go out with one of the best local guides around, Captain Al Lorenzetti. We're going to do the near offshore shark thing. So let's go out there and see what we can do. This trip we decided we're going to do a shark trip to the near shore grounds where most small boats are capable of reaching and fishing with light tackle. A lot of times at this particular time in the year, there are a lot of smaller sharks, very few big ones. And to fish them with 50s or 80s is ridiculous, it's overkill. So we said we can do something, have a good time, and go out there with like tuna jigging sticks and light tackle. As long as you can have 15 pounds of drag on the rod and reel, it's great for sharks anywhere from 50 to 150 pounds. My boat, the Skimmer, I purchased in 1978, and I used it, fished it hard for all of those years. Three years ago, I decided that I loved the boat so much, I was willing to put a lot of money into it to rebuild that boat and make it better than it was originally when it was new. To this day, it's still a great boat. I look at charts, I look at fathom curves, they're important. Wherever you have changes, radical changes in depths, you get upwelling of water, and uh, you get rips that form that tend to congregate the bait or move the bait. And in fact, that day we stopped in one area at about 120 feet and uh, we drifted in there. We had one small mako, gave us three nice jumps, and then after that it seemed to die. And there high. was some oh, tink of mackerel there, but not a whole lot. So I looked at my Navionics chart and looked for the next drop off, and I moved about two miles into a 130 foot drop. And it was a very calm day, and you could see the rip forming where this ledge was and I decided that I wanted to fish that rip. And since it was calm and we had a slow drift, I also decided that I was gonna drop the chum bag in the water and I was gonna drag it for about a quarter of a mile along that rip. And that's what I did. We dragged that chum bag, we dragged it a quarter of a mile 
and set up right in that rip line. And uh, that's when we proceeded to have some good action. We had thousands of tinker mackerel around the boat. When the sharks came into the slick, we knew it. Tinker mackerel, they normally would drift off and follow the chum and eat it and move away from the boat. And all of a sudden, all of them would take off and run right up to the chum bag, right next to the boat. I had a, a mackerel tail on a fairly small hook, just out of sight, right down in the chum, behind the boat, probably 30 to 35 feet down and the line started running off. John picked it up because I was the captain for the day. He was the angler. Let him do the work. Everybody likes a little bit of tail. Looks like it's about 50 pounds. You know what? Want to load up the tech? Near the end of the day, the chum was just about all gone. Uh, I took the last of the chunking bait, the mackerel and the bunker, chopped them all up, and I, I chunked very heavy for, you know, 15 or 20 minutes. And, uh, and actually, and then at that point, we had another runaway. I am the master of your destiny, my friend. That's right. Yeah. Talk to me. I told you you belong to me. Got it near the boat, and then it got tangled because that thresher has that long whip tail. It was right near the gunnel of the boat, and we were all like trying to stay right. back and stay out of the way of the tail. John's trying to stick the uh, the uh, tag into the fish. It was it was a little bit chaotic, but you know that's all part of it. It, it was fun. We got another tag, released the fish, and it was a real good time. We were out there to just have fun, fight the fish and release them. And uh, also, if you're going to do that, you might as well tag these fish and some knowledge can be gained from that. So uh, John Raguso had all his tagging kit, you know, handy, uh, which basically is nothing more than a pole with a little 
a metal point that the tag hangs on. When you bring the fish and wire it next to the boat, you insert this tag right behind the dorsal fin. And then when it's caught later, fisheries biologists can look at that and determine, you know, where the shark may have traveled from and to how much it grew in that particular time period. And so it's, it, it's a way to learn about their lifestyle and uh, to help conserve fisheries and to just learn about these fish and what they do. One mako, 125 pound thresher. And then on the mako that's out there still jumping. Yep, half a day of fishing, <laughs> less than 20 miles off the beach. All I could say is, how could I be the man when he's the man? <laughs> hey, <laughs> Captain Howell, John, you the got best, it, dude. The best fisherman that I know. <laughs> Good day. Good day on the water. It's an excellent day. Wow, what a great day that was out on the water. And it was only a half a day. We saw a whole bunch of sharks. We bent the rods. And the funny part of it is, I've known Captain Al Lawrence Eddie for the better part of 40 years. And this was the first day that we ever fished on the same boat. Wow, what an experience. And I can guarantee you, it won't be my last. Captain John Raguso for the Fisherman Magazine. Be safe out there. What's more exciting than catching a big fish? Catching a big fish and winning a new boat. Or a fishing trip to Zancudo Lodge in Costa Rica. How? Just be a Fisherman subscriber and weigh in your catch. You know, one of the greatest challenges today of being a parent is that we just can't get our kids away from the video games and from the TV screen. It's important to show a kid a great experience like fishing, and we did just that in this next episode where really great kids were having just a fantastic day in Barnegat Bay with blowfish. The bite was hot and the kids were all smiles. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Fisherman TV. I'm your host, New Jersey Delaware Bay Editor Chris Leto, and we're here in Forked River, New Jersey at Scenic Barnegat Bay. We're with some very special youth anglers today. We're going to stop in at Lacey Marine here in Forked River, and we're going to head out to Barnegat Bay and do some blow fishing. These are the unbelievable kings of the bay. They have arrived in huge numbers, and we're going to get some clam chum, we're going to get some clams and squid and light tackle, and these special little anglers, Haley, William, and Olivia are going to bail on some of these blow toads. Stay tuned as we hit the water hard here at the Fisherman TV. Well, we're fishing in Barnegat Bay, which is a, a rather large shallow bay. After the storm, it seems like it really cleaned up a lot in the bay. We've had a, a big influx of blowfish as well as a very good fluke fishery this year. And with that, it's been great fishing. It makes it great to take the kids out. Go, Haley, I mean, one. when it comes nice, to the blow Haley. fishing, it, it's a rather right. fast paced <laughs> with the action. It keeps the kids' attention. Um, when you're dealing with kids, especially under 10 years old, the attention span is, is pretty short. So you have to gear the trip around the child. Uh, you, don't, you don't really need any expensive tackle. You're definitely not running off to the store to buy 50s and, and all that. You know, you can use any medium heavy freshwater rod up to a light medium saltwater rod. You can buy the blowfish hooks over the counter at any reputable bait and tackle shop. Uh, we were using clam chum, which you put into the chum pot. That releases its juices and that's what draws the blowfish to your baits. Uh, for hook baits today we were using some squid as well as some clam. Again, that can all be purchased relatively inexpensively at your local bait and tackle shops. Will's got one. Will's got one. He's got one. Ready? I'll lift it right in. Right in. Show you, Haley. I know what you're doing. Yeah. Alright, here. Ready? Oh, you did it! <laughs> you kiss him. You kiss him. <laughs> Extra tentacles on your hook there, so. Now you should be able to get it to the bottom. Fill up the slack. Tight line. Now wait. Yes! Ha -ha. I love it when a plan comes together. Are you swimming in the boat? And that fish is just ready to go. If I threw him back, he'd swim away. But this one, what do you think? It'll be like, it'll be like the... Oh! You catch a float, um, blowfish by putting bait on, or like squid, on like the hooks, and then you put a sinker on, and then you just like let it drop all the way to the bottom, and you just wait and wait until you feel it and you give it a nice, you reel up really fast. Ready, one, two, 
Tighten up. Alright, Oh, there he is, Will. There he is. There he is. There it is. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, oh man. Oh. It was like shooting blowfish in a barrel. I mean, we literally got anchored. The anchor came tight. We shook the chum pots a couple times. And little William, no sooner, has got a rod in his hands and he's over to the side and hooking up, hooking up before the two girls even knew what hit him. They were looking around like, what is he doing? And he just had him one after the other. I picked up the little ice rod and caught a fish and William goes, I want to try that. He grabs the ice rod, sets the hook into a double header. I want to talk about Robert Redford and the natural. William Evans, you're going to hear a lot more about him in the future. So stay tuned for William Evans. He's a heck of a fisherman. That's too fun. Oh, nice fish. The easiest way to figure out where you want to anchor up for blowfish is obviously to read the reports in the fishermen as well as talk to your local bait shop. They'll be able to tell you what depth has been the hot depth. From there you're going to anchor up, make sure that you, the chum is going out the area you're going to be fishing in. You don't want to be anchored one direction and have the chum go out the front of the boat and be fishing the back. At, at that point the fish are all under your boat or out the front of your boat and not, not around your hook baits. So the, the key is really to be fishing close to your chum pot and have the hook baits in that chum slick. Today got pretty hectic with the kids, pulling them over one, two at a time. Uh, between Chris and myself, we did a lot of rebaiting of hooks. But it's one of the things that we, we try to do with Sea Witch Sport Fishing is I, I try to gear trips towards kids. You know, when you see that they're starting to lose interest, if the action is starting to wane, or even if you're in the middle of a hot bite, you know, you as the parent need to just call it quits and let the, let the kid kind of drive the trip. My first bull fishing trip was on Father's Day. And, and I caught like um, uh, oh, 13 or 14 bullfish. I think I fish probably three times as much now than I used to because he wants to go. We're back at the dock and we had a simply amazing time. I want to thank uh, Captain Jeff Evans with Sea Witch Charters. He really put us on the fish. We got right on that shallow flat where those fish were holding. And I also want to thank Dan Tholen, who's also a Commodore here at Forked River Tuna Club. He runs and owns and operates Lacey Marine and they supplied the chum and the clams that we needed today. Chumming heavily was the key to getting those blowfish feeding. And I also want to thank Pure Fishing. They donated some cute little rod and reel combos that Haley and Olivia and William used while we were fishing today. And I gotta tell you, the weather couldn't have been better and those blowfish are gonna taste just fine when we cook them up later. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Fisherman TV. I'm Chris Lido, reporting from the field. Lacey Marine of the Forked River has been the area's go-to shop for marine products and fishing tackle since 1979. Family owned and operated, they take pride in serving their customers with all their boating and fishing needs. Visit Lacey Marine. You'll be glad you did. Or check them out on the web at LaceyMarine.com. Jeff Evans with Sea Witch Sport Fishing. Today we're going to show you how to clean a northern puffer, which is otherwise known as a blowfish. A lot of people think that they're poisonous, but cleaned properly, these fish are not poisonous. As long as you handle them the, the right way, keep them cold, and don't let them rot, everything will be fine. All right, the first thing you're going to do actually is take your, your hand and feel for where the, the bone on the back of the head ends. And you're going to cut right behind that bone. Not all the way through the fish, but down to the belly skin. 
Okay, so once you get to that part, you're gonna have a piece of meat that looks like this. Okay, now you're gonna take your fish skinners, you're gonna get them on that piece of meat, and you just pull. And there's a properly cleaned blowfish. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Fisherman TV. We certainly had a great time shooting it, and we'd love to hear your feedback. Go to The Fisherman's Facebook page or thefisherman.com and tell us what you think. If you have an idea for an episode, we'd love to hear that as well. Uh, this is just yet another benefit of being a subscriber to The Fisherman Magazine, along with the Dreamboat Challenge, where you can win a brand new Cobia boat and a lot of other great prizes. So we thank you, and uh, have a great day fishing.